If you go to the gym and you work out and you come back and you look in the mirror, you will see nothing. And if you go to the gym the next day and you come back and you look in the mirror, you will see nothing. So clearly there's no results, can't be measured. It must not be effective. So we quit, right? Or if you fundamentally believe that this is the right course of action and you stick with it, like in a relationship, I bought her flowers and I wished her happy birthday and she doesn't love me. Clearly I'll give up, you know? That's not what happens. If you, if you believe there's something there, you commit yourself to act, an act of service. You commit yourself to the regime, the exercise. You can screw it up. You can eat chocolate cake one day. You can skip a, skip a day or two. You know, you, you, it allows for that. But if you stick with it consistently, I'm not exactly sure what day, but I know you'll start getting into shape. I know it. And the same with the relationship. It's not about the events. It's not about intensity. It's about consistency, right? You go to the dentist twice a year, your teeth will fall out. You have to brush your teeth every day for two minutes. What does brushing your teeth twice a day for two minutes do? Nothing, unless you do it every day, twice a day for two minutes. Right? It's the consistency. Going to the gym for nine hours does not get you into shape. Working out every day for 20 minutes gets you into shape. It's the daily practice of all the monotonous, little, boring things like brushing your teeth that matter the most. She didn't fall in love with you because you remembered her birthday and bought her flowers on Valentine's Day. She fell in love with you because when you woke up in the morning, you said good morning to her before you checked your phone. She fell in love with you because when you went to the fridge to get yourself a drink, you got her one without even asking. She fell in love with you because when you had an amazing day at work and she came home and she had a terrible day at work, you didn't say, yeah, 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 but let me tell you about my day. Right. You sat and listened to her awful day and you didn't say a thing about your amazing day. This is why she fell in love with you. I can't tell you exactly what day, and it was no particular thing you did. It was the accumulation of all of those little things that she woke up one day and as, as if she pressed a button, she goes, I love him, right? Leadership is exactly the same. There's no event. There's no thing I can tell you you have to do that your people will trust you. It just doesn't work that way. It's, the, it's an accumulation. Of, of lots and lots of little things that anyone by themselves is innocuous and useless. Literally, pointless by themselves. People will look at little things that are good leadership practices and say, that won't work. And you're absolutely right. But if you do it consistently, and you do it in combination with lots of other little things, mm. like saying good morning to someone, that looking them in the eye, it's those little innocuous things that you do over and over and over and over that people will say, I love my job. Consistency means that dependable, steady, predictable work is always vastly superior to spurts or flashes of brilliance and genius. That the person who is like the tortoise, who just plods steadily away, old steady Eddie, is always the person who tends to be more successful than the one who flashes here and flashes there, but cannot be counted on over the long term. Be consistent in your relationships, especially be consistent with your family, be consistent with your friends, be consistent with your boss, be consistent in your work. Make it so that you are the type of person that everybody can depend upon, that people will believe in and they'll depend upon and they know that if you say something, that you'll do it. That if you say you'll be somewhere or if you undertake a responsibility, that you will fulfill that responsibility. That sort of consistency, that sort of dependability is one of the most valuable things in the world of work today. I work with so many companies and I have staff that work in my companies and I know that the greatest joy that an employer can have is to give a person a job and know that it'll be done. And the most aggravating thing in the world is to give a person a job and have no idea if it'll be done, if it'll be done to a particular quality, if it'll be done on time or anything else. Just being the steady person. One of the things that I found, if I can pass this on to you, one of the things that I found when I was a young man, I thought that you had to have good grades in school in order to be successful. And then later I thought that you had to have a university education in order to be successful. And then later I thought that successful people are people who are somehow better than you and I. They somehow have unique talents, that somehow the gods have descended from Olympus and touched them on the heads. But one of the things that I found is that nobody is better than you or I. When you see men or women accomplishing great things, they're not better than you or I. They're not different from you or I. They're just doing things in a different way. You look at a person you went to school with who's now doing surgery as a doctor. The person's the same person, except that they've learned how to do surgery. You look at a person who 
you went to school with who is now an outstanding success in a particular field, all they've done is learned how to be a success in that field. And consistency, there's a, there's a law of accumulation in the universe, if I can pass this on, a law of accumulation that says that even though you do a hundred things or a thousand things that you don't see, eventually they accumulate and they gather a force of their own. That every single great accomplishment in life is the result of thousands of minor accomplishments that nobody ever sees. One of the people on the program, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, who had become successful as a singer, they said, isn't it wonderful that you've become so successful as a singer? She said, yes, it's wonderful. She said, but when I'm up on stage in Las Vegas and I'm making $50,000 a week or whatever it happens to be, she says, nobody sees the 16 years that I spent traveling around, living in a van, singing in cheap honky-tonks where people throw up on your piano and get drunk on the floor in front of you. Nobody sees the 16 years of living on the road, living at an average of less than $5,000 a year. What they see is the person up there on the stage. But every single great success was at one time a failure. And they failed and failed and failed and failed over and over again. And all great successes are a story of failure, 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 outstanding success. Boy, ain't he lucky. <laughs> Isn't that right? Boy, he was lucky. He sure had the right connections. So consistency is important. And even if you don't see yourself getting the results, be consistent. Keep working. Steady, steady, steady. Knowing that you're accumulating. You're putting yourself on the side of the angels when you're working consistently. Finally, with regard to consistency, guard your integrity as a sacred thing. As Ralph Waldo Emerson said, nothing at last is sacred but the integrity of your own mind. Never compromise your integrity for anything and never compromise your peace of mind for anything. You see, compromising your peace of mind is a way of compromising your integrity. Never do anything that disrupts your peace of mind. If it makes you feel unhappy, get out of it. Don't stay in relationships, don't stay in jobs, don't stay in situations that cause your peace of mind to be disrupted because your peace of mind is the highest good that you have. And a person who practices consistency consistently structures their life so what they are doing is being true to themselves. What they are doing is living up to the very best that is in them as a human being. And that takes tremendous courage. It takes tremendous courage because it's so easy to go along with the crowd. But you'll never be really happy unless you know that you are being true to yourself. This brings us to a very important mental principle called the Law of Accumulation. The application of this law is a fundamental reason for success in every field, including yours. This law says that every great life or great career is an accumulation of hundreds and perhaps thousands of efforts that nobody ever sees or appreciates. Great success is the result of countless hours, maybe even months and years of preparation and hard work toward the goal of becoming very good at what you are doing. This law of accumulation says that life is very much like a balance sheet, with both credits and debits. Every time you do something positive to enhance your abilities and to improve your life, you get a credit on the credit side of your ledger. Every time you waste your time or neglect to take advantage of an opportunity to learn and grow, you get a debit on the debit side of your ledger. Here's the key. Everything counts. Everything that you do or fail to do is written down and totaled up on your balance sheet. Everything that you do or fail to do counts in some way. Nothing is neutral. Everything is either moving you toward a better life or moving you away from it. Everything counts. A successful, happy, self-confident person is an individual who has consciously and deliberately built up a lot of credits on his or her balance sheet. An unhappy, negative, or insecure person is a person who has a lot of debits on his or her balance sheet. And since the only things that count are your actions, it seems that every positive and constructive action you engage in adds up and increases your levels of self-confidence and self-esteem. Perhaps the most important corollary of the law of accumulation is what is called the law of incremental improvement. This is really the law that explains how you move from wherever you are to the top of your field. This is the law that explains all great success in America or anywhere else in the world. This law simply states that a person becomes good at his or her chosen field by improving incrementally, continuously, over a long period of time. My friend Darren Hardy has written a book entitled The Compound Effect, in which he explains how it is that 
everything positive you do in your life compounds and multiplies, growing with force and power over the months and years. As Einstein said, compounding is the most powerful force in the universe. The law of incremental improvement is your key to an unlimited future of success, prosperity, and self-confidence. It doesn't matter where you're starting from. All that matters is where you're going. As Theodore Roosevelt said, do what you can with what you have where you are. By applying the law of incremental improvement to yourself and your work, you can begin moving upward toward joining the great ones in your field. If you are doing what you love to do, and you are doing it with all your heart, by engaging in continuous personal and professional improvement, you can begin to move forward at such a rapid rate that it will astonish you. You've heard of the 80-20 rule, which says that 80% of the income goes to 20% of the people. Your goal, if you are not already there, should be to join the top 20% in your field. If you're in the top 20% already, your job is to get into the top 10%, and then the top 5%, and then the top 4%, and so on. Your goal should be to be the best. Your goal is to be recognized by those around you as outstanding in your field. Your goal must be to pay any price, overcome any obstacle, and make any effort necessary to become excellent in your chosen career. It's so important for you to have the discipline of consistency, the discipline of putting the units of time in, whether you're doing research and development, whether you're doing practice and operation, whether you're doing debriefing and assessment, whether you're doing implementation, whatever it is you're doing and building your dream, it's important to have the discipline to be consistent in that practice. That's important. Consistency is going to bring about results. It's going to give you great results or it's going to give you great lessons. I got a key phrase for you. Life accumulates. We either accumulate the debt or the value. We either accumulate the regret or we accumulate the equity. Now, we must all suffer one of two pains. The pain of discipline or the pain of regret. And I'm suggesting discipline mental discipline to refine ideas. Of course it's laborious and of course it's a push, but it's called small price to pay so that you won't have the regret later on. Regret weighs tons. Discipline weighs ounces. So if you accept the early ounces of discipline of thought to refine ideas and not just let major questions go by, what about society? What about the government? What about taxes? What about religion? What about life? What about capital? What about business? What about society? All of these major questions. What about my life and my value and my place and my future? And what about life? What about origin? What about destiny? What about opportunity? What about possibility? All of these major questions, to let them go casually by is to miss the treasures that your life could accumulate into in the coming months, the coming years. So this is called major. What we ponder and what we think about sets the course of our life. It's like the set of the sail that's taking us somewhere. Let me give you a good question to write down. Where are my thoughts taking me? This is a biggie question. Where are my thoughts taking me? These are some of the things you want to make sure of. You might be able to be casual about some things, but here's some things not to be casual about. My philosophy is taking me somewhere. Big question, where? The accumulation of equity will either be there or won't be there. Life accumulates. And I'm either accumulating debt that I'll be sorry for or I'm accumulating value that I'll be happy about.